Why do congestive heart failure patients get edema in their legs and their ankles often? Well, it's all to do to increasing in pressures. Let me show you happening at the capillary level. And so what that means essentially is that they're happening at some of the, what we call microcirculation. And this is what we have, obviously the capillary bed. Now we know that blood is moving this direction. Okay. We're moving direction from oxygenated to deoxygenated blood. And this is going to return back to the heart to get reoxygenated through the lungs. Now movement of blood is very strong this way because we have the entire force of the left ventricle pumping effectively and pumping strong to move blood forward this way. However, on the venous side, blood doesn't move nearly as fast. Okay. It's slowly moving this way back to the heart. And that's simply because that we're not using the force of the left ventricle to move it. We're moving it with muscle movements, we're moving it with valves and so on and so forth. So it takes longer, it's slower moving. So essentially what happens is that we have a large force moving this way and a slower force moving that way effectively creating what we call a pressure gradient here at the capillary level. But that's an okay thing because what happens here is that we end up having a pressure buildup at this point, which allows for a leaking of fluid. The fluid leaks out of the capillaries like so in very much like a hose with a leak in it, just because a hose has a leak in it doesn't mean that the end of the hose won't still be able to full flow blood. Only a small amount leaks out of that hose. Well, similar kind of idea. So what happens here is that all of this fluid starts to accumulate. Now this is normal. This is a normal hydrostatic pressure that's happening here. And so what happens in this particular case is that the lymph, well, actually soak up all that fluid. It'll soak up all the excess fluid that's coming out that we don't want there and circulate it through the lymph vessels and, and vent effectively clean it. And so that's an okay thing. Now, where does the edema come up? Well, we know in patients that have congestive heart failure, their ventricles, their ability to move blood is effectively decreased, specifically the right ventricle. If it's impacted, then we're going to have even slower movement this way. Okay. We're going to have even slower movement through the venous side. That's essentially what's going to happen here is that because we have a slower movement this way, because of that impact on that right ventricle, the pressure gradient here increases. Okay. We get more pressure at this junction point. When that more pressure occurs, we're going to have more leaking. Okay, we're going to have an increase in fluid movement outside the vessels, which means the lymph has to work that much harder, but it has a capacity. It can't just soak up like a vacuum and have an unlimited capacity. There's only so much it can soak up. So we have a basically interstitial fluid that's accumulating in this area because we're overwhelming the ability of the lymph to basically keep up with that, effectively giving you your edema.